Welcome back to the, the Bantu, Bantu Village. Village. So this is part two of our discussion on um, how we ended up in Tanzania. And, um, you know, it started out, I would say, with um, the ending of our last video. We were talking about when we were in Tanzania. What I didn't say is that that last night that we were in Tanzania... The first time we were packing up our things and we were um, getting ready for our trip, which would be the next day. And we had the television on and it was New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And as we were, you know, getting our things together, it so happened that there was a commercial that came on and the commercial was on Botswana. And we were thinking to ourselves that I guess the Most High is telling us that that is the next country that he wants us to go to. Because that was the impression that we had. Remember, it was the two countries, Tanzania and Botswana. And so we just thought that it was very interesting that the very last day when we we're, you know, that last night when we were getting ourselves together, we were presented with the other country that we needed to go to. And so we decided that we shouldn't waste time. We should um, look into going as soon as possible. And so um, we knew that um, the next opportunity that we probably could go and check out Botswana would be around my birthday because I normally would travel around my birthday anyway and go to new places and the like. And so we decided that we would book the trip around the time of my birthday. And so um, that was what we did. And so when we were um, booking the trip, we decided to have it so that there was a layover in London so that we could visit some family there. Right. And so, yeah. And that gave me an opportunity to reunite with my sister that I had not seen in several years. Yeah. It was really a wonderful experience. And I, and I had the chance to see some of the cousins, new cousins, um, family that I had never met before that because they were young and, you know, some family that I hadn't seen since the time years before when I had done a study abroad and had a chance to visit them. Yeah. And so it was a it was a wonderful experience. It was so nice getting to see them again and connect with the family, all those that could come together. And so that was um, the, the first leg of the trip. So then uh, we were able to take a flight to Gaborone and um, we were there in the city of Gaborone for just a small time because initially, because we, because it was my birthday, we wanted to, you know, do some sightseeing and, you know, see some areas of interest and the like. And so the package that we had for the tour took us to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And so we flew to the closest city to the border of Zimbabwe. And then we took uh, um, a tour, for, we drove um, with one of the um, trucks from, from Botswana across the border to Zimbabwe. And I think that very first day when we got in is when we were able to um, go to the lodge, meet up with a few people that would be in the group, and we did a safari. And it was really interesting because in the safari, we were able to see the lions, giraffes, um, the elephants, buffalo. the buffalo, the baboons. And so we saw a, a number of different um, wildlife while we were there. It was really fascinating. And then we overnighted at a lodge, and the next day was Packed. The next day was actually my birthday. And so it started out with going to Victoria Falls, which was just 
amazing. It was absolutely amazing. The power of the water there is unbelievable. And so we were able to, you know, get that experience. And I think it was there that um, we uh, met a guy who was doing another tour and we had asked him to take a picture. And that's when he told when us. And he said, sisters, where have you been for so long? Yes. Welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> so it was a nice experience, a nice yeah. welcoming experience. And so then from there, because there had been a little shift in the schedule, um, initially it didn't look like we were going to be able to do the, the, um, the lion sanctuary, but they were able to work it out. So we were able to do the lion sanctuary. And when I had talked to the tour guide about it, she had initially said that they were cubs. And so I was thinking small, little, you know, lion cubs. Cute little cubs. be able to pet and play cubs, with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These were full grown lionesses almost. I mean, they just had a few spots on their legs, but they were 19 months old. So they were pretty much full grown. And they um, initially um, gave us some information about the sanctuary and how it came to be. Um, you know, because a lot of times what occurs is there's different things that are unfortunately poaching. happening, like poaching and, and things like that. People encroaching on their territory. And so they have this place set up so that the lions can be, you know, brought into the sanctuary when they're young. They can be socialized and then re-released, right? And so this is what they were doing there in the sanctuary. And so it was really interesting to see that. And when we went to, after we got the orientation, then we were going to where the, the cubs were and we were walking on this path and the path opened up and what did we see? Two Big huge grown enough lions. lions. Yes. <laughs> and they were initially looking at us and were wondering, who are these people? And so as we came closer to where they were, they were encouraging us to, you know, pet them, engage with them and pet them and the like. And, you know, initially it was a little intimidating, you know, but they were very docile and they were very friendly and there were other people that had been there that I think worked well, there, volunteer there yeah. and so forth. And so they were used to people being around. And so we were able to pet them. We went on a walk with them. Um, you know, they were singing happy birthday to me because that day was actually my birthday. And, you know, the lion was sitting there and I don't think she was too thrilled about the, 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 singing. the, the singing. Yeah. And so she got up and, yeah, but it was an amazing experience. And so then after that, we did the, the elephant sanctuary. And in the similar situation, these are elephants that are unfortunately impacted from poaching and people encroaching upon the area that they typically would, you know, roam and, and, you know, live. And so they have these sanctuaries where, you know, they're able to rehabilitate some of the injured elephants and some of the orphans. And then, you know, after they get to a certain age, they re-release them out into the wild. And so, you know, we had an opportunity to walk with them. And man, there was this one big male Jungle. elephant um, he was the bull and he was so gentle. And when he would walk, you would hear the ground shaking as his, his footsteps were hitting the ground. But he was so gentle and lovely. And we were able to feed them and, you know, have that experience. And some of the, the little ones were really mischievous and were trying to take all the food for themselves. And so it was, it was such an interesting experience. And then after that, because of the shuffling that had occurred, we had basically that sanctuary to ourselves as tourists. And so we had an opportunity to sit down with the manager of the sanctuary and we were talking with him. And that was when um, I think we I had shared with him that I really had wanted to go to the great Zimbabwe city because I had done some research about it. And I you know, know that it's one of the old ruins and I also was telling him about, you know, the, the Limba tribe because I knew that they were in South Africa and I also had read that they were in Zimbabwe.
And I know that they are uh, the Hebrew Israelites. They're the lost tribes of Israel. And so I had told him about it and I was hoping that I would have, you know, met some of those from that tribe because I knew they were near the great Zimbabwe city. But then as I was telling him about it, he said, well, I'm of that tribe. And I was like, well, what are the chances that we would actually have met someone? I had a chance to sit down and have this conversation. Yeah. And so he, as we were telling him about, you know, what we had been learning about and, you know, in terms of the Limba tribe, they have done enough research. There's been genetic testing and all of that, that they were able to find that they are of the tribe of Levi. So they're the Levites. And there's a whole history about that, that, you know, is a great opportunity if you're interested to, to learn more about it and how... Um, many of them came into Africa as they were escaping war and other situations that was going on, you know, and they went into the west side and they came down into the east side of Africa, which is how the Limba came down from um, Yemen and then came into Africa right. and then went down yeah. um, along the east coast of Africa. And so actually there is some research that talks about the great zimbabwe city being built by them so it's kind of it's, it's a lot of interesting history so when we were sharing that with him he began to tell us more about some people who were coming to africa for the first time mm -hmm. and i believe because of the um what you call it the the return, regathering. The, yeah, the gathering. The regathering. Mm -hmm. And some of them were very emotional Yeah, when they came and talked about their trip to Africa for the first time in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a really good book um, called From Babylon to Timbuktu from uh, with, um, I think the author is Randolph Windsor. That's a good book. And there's a number of other really good material that you can read about who we are and, and the like. And so anyway... As we were talking to him and he told us he was of that tribe and we were explaining to him some of the history. Then he said, you know, I had always wondered why my grandfather was always called to anoint the kings and the chiefs. And so we were explaining to him, well, that's interesting because it's the Levi. That's the tribe mm -hmm. of the Levi. And they were the priestly tribe and they would be the ones to always anoint the kings. And so even after all these years, without even remembering the history, you could see some of those practices that were still, still happening. Existing, it was yeah. very, very interesting. And so as we were talking to him, he had just told us earlier that he loved eating warthog. And so now we're saying, well, now that you know, there is a responsibility that goes along with it, you know? And so it's going back to, to the dietary laws, the dietary laws, you know? And so yeah. it was interesting. So he said that he was going to do more research about it and so we pray that he has learned more and is able to share more with his yeah. family and surrounding friends so after the elephant sanctuary we um, went back to our lodge and we were able to freshen up because we then were going to do a sunset cruise on the Zambezi river. on the Zambezi river yeah. and that was just beautiful it was amazing. You could see from the distance the, the mist from the waterfall. You could see the hippo, hippos in the water. Um, we had a chance to talk to some of the people that were on the cruise with us, one of which was really interesting. It was a woman that was there with her husband, her, I think it was her, her parents, her parents and, her and her children. I think it was two children she had, yeah. right? And what she shared that they did is they decided to take their kids out of school, I think for a month or two, maybe. And instead of just them learning from the book, they wanted them to have actual hands-on experience. And so one of the things that she wanted them to understand, I think she was a teacher, and she said one of the things she wanted them to have an understanding of was real life practical experiences. And to, instead of reading about the countries and reading about the cultures in a book, to she actually them take there. them there. Yeah. And I think they had actually gone to a few different places because I think yes. they went to Australia and, right. and a couple of different places before they came to Africa where we met them. And I just thought that it was such an interesting way of educating the children instead of only thinking of them learning from a book let them experience it, experiential learning. So that's what she was doing. 
and they were being enriched. Um, she was teaching them certain principles, like if you want something, you gotta work for it. And so, you know, certain things that they wanted to have, like if they wanted treats and things like that, she made them learn to do different entrepreneurial things so that they could get enough money to get some of the things they wanted. So real hands-on practical experiences she was teaching them mm -hmm. from an early age. And so I thought that was so fascinating. I thought it was an actually, a great example. Um, and so, yeah, so we had that whole experience on the cruise. And then after the cruise, we went to a cultural restaurant in Zimbabwe. And that was fascinating because they were able to bring in um, different people that could do the, the traditional dances, the singing, the drums, um, you know, kind of like, um, performances that they were doing and and they would incorporate you know people because it was people from all over the world that were there from different tours and the like and it was like the go-to restaurant and so they had a spread of all kinds of food you can imagine um some of which i would never even consider eating like the grub remember they had those um yeah. those grub fat, worms those fat fat, worms. fat grubs that you know they seasoned up, I'm sure it was seasoned up very well, but mm, no thank you. But they, it was a lot of different things that they had that you know was for anybody, whether you were vegetarian or you ate meat or whatever, there was something for everybody to eat. They even had crafts set up outside. Yes, they did. And, and I, that's where you got your bowl. Yeah, right? that's where I got some of the bowls that I was able to bring back. It was really lovely, well-designed things. Um, very talented people, beautiful artisan um, kind of um, pieces that were made. It was very nice. We had and a some of them were experience. being made right outside. Exactly, we saw them making them, and yeah, so so it was a, a wonderful experience. And so after that, we um, the next day we went back to Gaborone, and so when we went back to Gaborone, it was when we. Um, we're able to do a little bit of a tour. We went to a museum which had a beautiful kind of view of the entire city. Mm -hmm. It had a whole panoramic view of the city that you could um, view. We went to the museum and that was when we had learned about like the traditional um, ceremony that the new chief had to go through in order to become the chief, which was to, you know, he had to go out and hunt and kill a leopard unfortunately, but he had to kill a leopard and bring the skin back to show that he was worthy of being the chief. And so we had uh, uh, an interesting kind of history of the country and uh, we were able to go to an arts and crafts store and it was just a nice experience. Yeah. We were even able to buy roasted maize on yes, the street. which I know is your favorite. So yes. yeah, so we were able to do that. And, um, you know, talk to the, I think the, the driver of the, the taxi was kind of like taking us around and explaining certain things to us. And then we had a nice conversation with the, um, the concierge at the hotel. Right. And so, yeah. After that, the, the next day was Saturday. And so we went to church and we were able to have lunch with the people there and get to know and talk to some of the people. And one of the ladies kind of took us under her wing mm -hmm. and she asked us how much we had seen of the city. And we we're like, well, we didn't see it too much, but we saw it a little bit. And so she said, oh no, there's so much more that you need to see of the city. And so she decided to give us first a tour of the conference office it was the conference area. yeah the whole layout of the land and the the school that school. they had mm -hmm. the the different buildings for you know the the um the church that the what basically the church owned all that fell onto the kind of like campus of the church and so she gave us a tour of that she took us to her house and you know right across the street one of her neighbors was, was uh, getting married so we were able to crash the wedding with her. And then after that, we were able to um, meet her daughter and her daughter's two Oops. daughters. Mm -hmm. um, so her grandchildren, we were able to meet them and they were so cute. And um, after that, she kind of took us a little bit around the city. And that was where she, uh, we went to the monument of the three Dikosi monument. And those are the three chiefs that had traveled to Great Britain back in 1895 
and they went to ask Joseph Chamberlain, who was the Secretary of State for the colonies at the time in Queen Victoria, to separate their Praetoriate from Cecil Rhodes' um, British South Africa Company into Southern Rhodesia, which was, you know, present day Zimbabwe. And the per permission was granted, and it meant that Botswana would remain under British rule until independence in 19, the 1960s. But I think one of the interesting things about Botswana is that they didn't experience war. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't go through the same war that had occurred in um, South Africa. And so that kind of kept them a little sheltered from some of the, the violence that was happening in the surrounding areas. So they never experienced the racist apartheid system that South Africa experienced. And so I think that was something we had talked about with one of the um, one of the concierge guys. Remember when we were talking to him about our experience oh, and so forth? Yes, when we first got to the hotel, yeah. we had talked about it. We had talked about it with him and he yeah. was explaining how because they didn't have the same kind of colonization that South yeah. Africa had, their whole experience of racism and all of that is very different. And it was kind of actually refreshing to kind of get that experience, yes. that side of the story from him. And so, yeah, so we had an opportunity to experience that and, um, you know, get to know more of the local people, having different conversations with them. And, you know, and then after that, we pretty much were um, wrapping up our tour. Mm -hmm. And so I think at at that point, you know, we decided we when we got home, we were going to regroup and, um, you know, pray about it and try and figure out where exactly the Most High wanted us to go. That was the most important thing. We wanted to know mm -hmm. whether it was Tanzania or whether it was Botswana. And so in our next part we'll talk a little bit more about how it is that we made the choice we made the choice so thanks for tuning in um we ask you again to like subscribe and um, share and join us on this journey that we're on because this has been really an amazing trip yeah this has been you know um uplifting in many ways we have had so many different experiences along the way. We've met so many different people that have been, you know, just a blessing right. in, in so Absolutely. many ways. Yeah. And it's also always interesting how the Most High will put the right people in place at the right time. Yeah. And it just goes to show how much he's been involved in everything that we've been doing. So mm. okay. ag again, welcome to the Bantu Village. And uh, we are looking forward to continuing this journey with you. And sharing our experiences as we go along on this journey. So, so many people have been a blessing indeed. Every time that we were at a point where we needed some assistance, the Most High has always inserted someone mm -hmm. to be there for us, to help us navigate through many areas that we had to, and we were not alone. And we just want to assure you also that if you should decide to take a journey like this, just know that the Most High will be with you. Once you are connected to Him, He will always supply your needs at the right time. So we are hoping that you continue on this journey with us. And all of our experiences that we've had, some of the difficult times, you don't have to go through all of them. And this is why we're sharing. So please, continue with us on this journey. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload again, you'll be able to share our experience. Thank you for listening and join us on our next journey.